QuickBooks Online 2022 bank fee deposit entered as income for a cash-based business. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We set up with a 30 day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the 125% currently in the home page, otherwise known as the get things done page. Business view as compared to the accounting view. If you want to change to the accounting view, it's something you can do by going to the cog up top, switch to accounting view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views, either here or by jumping over to the sample company file currently in the accounting view. Back on over, we're going to be opening up a few tabs to put reports in by right clicking on the tab up top, duplicating it, back to the tab to the left, right clicking again, duplicating again, back to the tab to the left one more time, right clicking again and duplicating again. As that is thinking, let's see where the reports are located over in the accounting view, which is simply on the left hand side under reports. If we go back to the business view, then the reports in the second tab are going to be located in the business overview on the left hand side. And then under the reports on the left hand side, we're going to close the hamburger up top, open up the balance sheet as one of our favorite reports. Up top, let's do the range change from 010121 to 123121 and run it. Then we'll go to the tab to the right and we'll go to the business overview back into the reports again, closing up the hamburger, this time opening up the PL profit loss income statement, otherwise known as range change from 010121 to 123121 and run. And then we'll tab to the right and go on into the business overview again one more time last time for now at least and go into the reports and then close up the hamburger searching for the trial balance this time we're going to do a little search for it searching for that one there it is i found it we found it going up top it was trying to hide but i found it anyways 010121 to 123121 and run it so there we have it. Let's go to the first tab now and open up our bank feed information in the first tab, going into the bookkeeping and the business view to do that. And then in our transactions up top, if you were in the accounting view to find the bank feeds that have been input into the system, you would be on the banking on the left hand side to find it back on over to the bank feed practice file. We're in what I would call bank feed limbo. This is information where the bank feeds have been entered into the system, but they have not found their way to be making the financial statements into the promised land of creating the financial statements or checking them. They need a little bit more information, a little bit more guidance, including customers, vendors, and most importantly, the account to be assigning them to. That's what we're doing now. We're going to be jumping on over to the deposit side of things. So to do that, one way you can sort your data is by amount, for example. And you could say, I'm going to hit it again and look at the deposits. So now I've got the inflows that we're going to be looking at. We will go back to some of the outflows and we will talk about rules uh, in future presentations in its own kind of area. But for now, let's run. Let's jump on over to the other side of things. The inflows from our into the checking account which typically, hopefully, in a business setting, will be coming from customers in some way, shape, or form. Jumping back on over to our flow chart, just to get an idea of the general flow. So now we're in here, the customer section or income section. How will bank feeds fit into our customer cycle? We want to do, as we've been doing in the past, thinking about the most easy transaction, the one that we can be reliant on the bank feeds as much as possible, making the process as automated as possible, and then add levels of complexity from there. So we're going to start with the easiest method you can possibly use. Although as you use an easier method, you're often sacrificing some of the added detail that you might get in place if you were to have a bit more complex method. So the easiest method would be one in which you have a cash basis, but not only a cash basis, you're going to be moving away from that even towards more easy to more dependence on the bank feeds to building our books directly from the bank feeds. The reason that's different than a cash basis is because even in a cash basis, if you used a full service accounting system, 
you would be entering the transaction with the create sales receipt over here. You can imagine one in which you're a restaurant or a food truck situation or any situation where you have a register, you get paid at the same point in time, you do the work, that would be a cash-based business. But most of the time you would use this transaction and then record the deposit, possibly with the bank feeds, or more likely, you would then have to record the deposits because you would have to group the transactions you had, possibly some of them being cash, putting them into the bank account in the same format as you expect them to be on the bank statement so you could do a bank reconciliation. That's a huge internal control uh, over your cash flow. So if you're working at a register, you will typically have kind of a process like that. You're gonna record the, the revenue on your side. You're gonna actually deposit them into the bank. You wanna be able to, to match out the, the sales that you made in the system to the grouped sales or the group deposits that are eventually gonna hit the bank. And therefore the bank feed will often be used as a checking figure in order to match out and verify that what you have entered on your side is correct. And that matching gives you a big internal control over the process of your cash flow generation. Uh, if you are a step further, it would be a type of business that's quite common these days, like a gig work type of business. So if you're getting paid by a platform that just pays you like an Amazon, like a YouTube, like an AdSense type of thing from Google or, or what Alphabet or whatever, or uh, something like that, you're getting royalties or you're getting teaching income, uh, something like that, then most likely you're just gonna wait till you get paid by the platform. And at that point in time, you can simply record the revenue. So that's what we'll start out with. That's kind of the idea that we'll start off with. That would be the easiest type of method. And in that method, you would not be using the sales receipt or an invoice, the two forms typically used to create a, a revenue uh, type of transaction, but instead using the deposit as it goes through the bank feeds to then record to the revenue account. That means that you're not gonna be using items as you record the deposit, as you would if you had the sales receipt, the item telling you what you sold, whether it be inventory or service items. That means that you're losing a level of detail when you record the deposit because it's not naturally used as a sales type of transaction because QuickBooks wants you to use the items and go through the sales receipt or, or the uh, create invoice. So you could still do it over here, but you gotta recognize you're gonna lose some detail. What detail will you lose? You might not be able to pick up the customer as readily in, in some cases, uh, that, and you might not be able to sort as by customer as easily. It'll just be basically income. So the income statement will be correct but it might be a little bit more difficult to sort by customer and it might be more difficult or be impossible in essence to have sub reports that are gonna sort by item, which you actually did because you're not gonna be including items here, the service items or inventory items because you can't on the deposit, you could and have to basically on the sales receipt. So that's the general idea. So we'll start off now thinking about that kind of system where we're relying on the bank. Then we'll think about possibly adding a little bit more complexity as if we had a cash register type of situation, but still on a cash basis. And then we'll add the added level of complexity saying, what if we have to actually invoice people? How do the bank feeds fit in in that scenario? Okay, back then to our bank feeds. So we're back into QuickBooks in the bank feeds. Now let's think about some of the ways that you might get paid if you're using something like a gig work type of situation and you're working with different types of platforms. Oftentimes you're gonna be needing some kind of intermediary in order to process the payment to get it into your QuickBooks system, something like a PayPal oftentimes or something like Stripe oftentimes to process those payments. So oftentimes we have questions with those type of intermediary platforms in terms of do I need more detail than simply the deposit that I'm gonna get from these intermediary platforms when it finally hits my checking account. In other words, here in my checking account, I'm gonna see the deposits for something like a PayPal that have been grouped together, most likely from multiple different sales that have been happening, possibly on different platforms that are then gonna be pulled over here. The same could be the case for something like a Stripe, for example. So is that good enough would be the question. In other words, do I need more detail? Do I need to actually know each of the customers, for example, or possibly even each, each of the platforms that I would like into my QuickBooks system? Or is that information not relevant to me? Do I not need to have a whole list 
of all the customer transactions that I had in my QuickBooks system, could I possibly get that information from say just simply the PayPal or whatever the intermediary software is and is that good enough, is that appropriate for us or do I need to pull that in to the QuickBooks system? Are there other types of things I need in the QuickBooks system such as tracking the inventory and things like that? Is, is that something I need to do on the QuickBooks side or is that something that uh, I, can, I don't have to do? So these are questions in terms of how much data you're gonna need in the system. Now you have other types of applications. I won't get into them here, but you can look into the apps on the left-hand side and you can find different things. We might try to connect to PayPal basically using bank feeds. PayPal is becoming similar to a checking account at this point in time. So rather than just being an intermediary. So for example, if you just had like one thing that you did and they paid it to PayPal and say you had a teaching platform, for example, and they paid it to PayPal and then you just took it from PayPal and brought it into your checking account, then you might be okay with just saying, I'm just gonna wait till it hits my checking account and I'm gonna call it income from basically this one thing or possibly multiple things, but there are multiple platforms that do the same thing and I'm okay with that. I'll just call it all teaching income uh, once it flows into the checking account. But if you're making payments out of PayPal, and using it as inflows and outflows, well now it's working kind of like a checking account and you would need the more detail typically so you can properly record your revenue and your expenses. So we might try to connect to PayPal because it's acting more like a bank account and less like just simply an intermediary type of account. But you could have similar things for Square, you could have things for a Shopify type of store, you've got e eBay kind of connections, uh, WooCommerce and whatnot. So these are other applications that you can connect to. There's Amo you know, applications for Amazon and so on. If you put inventory into the picture and you put sales tax into the picture, then it becomes somewhat more complicated. And again, the question becomes, how much detail do I need in QuickBooks? How much tracking of things like inventory do I need in QuickBooks versus outside of QuickBooks? And how am I gonna integrate more that more the complexity that is involved there? The simplest way to have this set up or the simplest type of company would be that you're doing some gig work, say for like one platform or multiple platforms that all pay you kind of the same way. And then you could just basically wait till it hits your checking account and record it basically as income. But again, PayPal, you have another integration with their and inventory then will, will increase the complexity. So, so we could have that, you could have, if you had AdSense or something like that, that could flow through directly to your checking account. And if that's the case and there's no inventory involved with it, then of course you can record the revenue once it hits your bank feed. If you've got like any kind of transfer that happens like that, then you, could, you can record that possibly as revenue as it comes in. And then Stripe accounts, that's another kind of problem. If all your Stripe kind of income came from one source, then you might just wait till it hits your bank account and, you, and you'd be okay just calling it income and have all the other detail on the Stripe side of things. But if you want all the customers that are involved in it and so on, then you might need some more integration with some other software to help you to pull that information into QuickBooks. You might not need it, but you might need it. And then we, we have Amazon. Now Amazon might be paying you in multiple different ways you might be getting you know, Amazon Prime stuff, you, you might be getting uh, royalties from Amazon, you might be getting Audible uh, goes through, but I think that's separate, Audible's a separate thing, and, uh, and you might have inventory issues with Amazon. Obviously, if inventory is involved, that gets a little bit more complex, but note that if you get paid for different things from the same person or the same company like Amazon, you could try to break those out possibly to, to different types of income accounts, Audible, again, there's no inventory involved in it, so you can bring that in fairly uh, quickly. And so those Amazon, those are some of the general ways that you can get paid through this. So let's just add one that, uh, in like the simplest, one of the more simple types of formats we can do this. So I'm just gonna pick one of these Stripe kind of uh, transactions. Now the Stripe is an intermediary type of transaction. I'm gonna wait till it hits my bank account and then I'm just gonna record it into basically uh, my system as income at that point in time. Now that would be, I could do that if I only get paid basically by one thing from Stripe and I'm gonna assume here, for example, it's basically a website income. So I'm just gonna say it's, it's my webpage income. We're going to say for sales made on the webpage, let's say, and then I'm gonna record that and increase my revenue account as it comes into, into my system here. Note what I don't have then 
I don't have the detail on who paid me on, on the page because I'm not pulling that information in from Stripe that I, I could try to integrate and get that information into QuickBooks. The question is, do I need all the customer information uh, into QuickBooks or would it be good enough for me to have that somewhere else like on the Stripe or possibly on the website and then just record the revenue on my side so I can get the financial transactions recorded. That's the kind of thing you would want to think about. Notice it recorded it here as a transfer. I might want to record it rather as basically a category, which will most likely make a deposit type of form here. So I'm going to transfer that over to the category. I've got the date. Note that you typically want to add a vendor still. And so I'm going to add Stripe as the vendor. Stripe is really an intermediary company. It's not, it's not actually who I made the sale to. So it's kind of a generic vendor that I'm ad adding right now, but I will allow me, that will allow me to sort this information by the Stripe accounts that everything I've recorded under Stripe uh, and give me an added level of detail for my reporting. So I'm gonna say save that. And then on the income account, I wanna add an account and put this into, I'm gonna say web income. So I'm gonna, I'm going to make another tab, right click it on the tab up top and duplicate it. And I'm going to change this to the business view or the accounting view so that I can add an account more easily by going to the cog up top and then going down to the accounting view. So we'll go into that. So there we have it. And just a quick note as we, I'm going to add some income accounts. If I go into the income statement over here, just note on the income side of things, if you were doing a full service kind of income statement, you wouldn't typically want to have a whole lot of income statement accounts. In other words, the general rule would be that people often uh, run into problems by wanting to make an income account by customer or make an income statement account by item. And you don't generally want to do that. In other words, I don't want to have a separate income account for all of my customers because that's going to make my income statement way too long. And usually in a full service accounting system, I could run subsidiary reports breaking out the income by customer. So I don't want that on my actual income statement or they want to make too many categories for, for the types of things that we provide or sell. Inventory account by item, inventory account by service item. You might want some subcategories there, but you don't typically want a whole, like everything you do in some, a whole lot of service items. You want them in general groups so that the income statement is a summary and you can have sub reports to give you that more detail broken out by customer or item. Now, if you're doing this system where you're not doing a full service accounting system because you're not using the create sales receipts and the invoice, you might be more likely to then say, I'm going to create an income account by basically big customer or ex by basically platform. So it's tempting to be able to say, I'm going to say an, an income account by, you know, my my uh, YouTube platform or something or income account by AdSense or something like that. Uh, if, if you're not, if you're doing this kind of format, but in general, you want to be careful with that. And even still, you might want to be more broad and say, this is my teaching platform income or something uh, like that. So that's just the general rule. I'm going to go to the second tab over here. Let's open up our chart of accounts, which now we're in the accounting view. So it's going to be on the accounting on the left hand side. And I'm going to close the hamburger. I'm going to make a new account and I'm going to say it's going to be a income account, income type of account. And then I'm just going to call it sales. Let's call it fees. And then I'm going to call it like website income, income from my website. I'm imagining pretty generic name, but that's what I'll put there. Let's save it. And then let's go back to the first tab. I'm going to refresh the screen, go back into my transaction. And I'm going to make it a, a categorized transaction. I'm going to put my vendor back in, which I said was Stripe. Stripe being the vendor. I'm going to say now the category is going to be, what did I call it? Web site income. And so that's going to be it. The description pulls in. We can make a rule for it in, the, in a similar fashion as we did before. Bit, but on the deposit side of things, tagging it out to all Stripe items, adding the rule. So let's just do that just to add a general rule. So I'm going to say, let's add a rule, create a rule. And the rule, the rule is I'm making a rule here, people. That's not the rule. I'm going to, I'm going to copy the name, which is Stripe. Every time something uh, comes in from Stripe, it's a money in as opposed to a money out rule. And I'm going to say it's applied to all, all accounts here. 
and then we're gonna say it could be all or any, but we only have one condition down below, so either one will work for us. I'm gonna take the description, same kind of descriptions here we had on the outflow. I'm gonna use the description. I'm gonna say it contains, and then we're just gonna have less than this. I don't need the whole thing. I just want stripe right there. If it says stripe, I want you to apply this, uh, this action to it. What do we want to do? I want to use a deposit form rather than the transfer form. So this is on the deposit side. When we were on the other one, it was on the expense side. And I want you to put it into the category of income of this website income. And then the payee is going to be, in other words, the customer is going to be Stripe, even though that's an intermediary kind of thing. And there it is. I'm not going to add it automatically, but I'm going to go through and then add them as we go. And let's save it. So there we have it. So now the rule has been set up. So if I go to the rules tab, now these are all the rules. These are the rules. I'm making the rules around here. And these are the ones I've made so far. That's that one. If we go back to the first tab, then let's add them. Let's start to add these. We, I don't need to have all these here. So I'm gonna, we could put our cursor here and then I'm gonna hold down shift and go down and I could basically accept all of those. So these are all the Stripe transactions that are applying the rule. Let's update these. Uh, and I'm gonna update transaction type, hold on a second. I'm gonna take those and accept those, not update them, accept those. I'm gonna do that for all the transactions here. So let's say, let's say I categorize these all the all the stuff with a rule i'm going to add them at this point so i'm going to take all the stuff that has a rule on it i'm holding down shift and doing all this stuff with a rule if there are any other rules stuff let's just as clean this thing up and add those notice that these two aren't really rules they're just guessing so i'm not going to add those only the ones that are following my rule quickbooks doesn't get to make their own rule to put stuff in i'm making i'm making the rules around here except that one so we'll put that in place. So now let's take a look at our, our balance sheet and run it again, run it again. And so now we've got some deposits. So let's go into our checking account. Not enough to turn it positive yet, but that's okay. That's okay. And so now we've got all these deposits that are in place. If I was to go into one of these Stripe items, then we would see the deposit form. It's not gonna go into the bank feeds. It goes into the deposit form, which is the form that is used typically when there's an increase uh, to the account. Notice that this, this form doesn't have an item or anything. So we did a kind of an unnatural thing for QuickBooks. We recorded it directly to an income account as opposed to using an invoice or sales receipt to do so. But that's the easiest thing to do relying on the bank. So then if we go to the income statement tab and refresh that report, run it again. Now we've got our income up top. So we had our website uh, income. So if we go into there, then here's all the money that flowed through from Stripe. And uh, so there, there we have it. And there's our total down below. So that looks good. And then I'm gonna go back up top and go back then to our profit and loss. I can also take a look then if I let's go to the tab, the second tab to do this, the first tab, second tab, let's go into the to the to the hamburger. I'm now in the accounting view. And I would go into the sales area, which would be the get paid area if it was the business view. And I can take a look at this information by let's say customer. Now note, I have my customer list out here as Stripe, which isn't an actual customer, that's an intermediary, but it can kind of track the information that's coming from you know, the Stripe, which would basically be the web page. If I go into the Stripe, notice if I go into the detail here in the transaction list, I don't have the normal transactions we would expect to see because I don't have any sales receipts and I don't have any invoices, those being the, the types of forms that were typically uh, going to be in here in the receive payment types of forms. We don't have any of those because we kind of bypassed all that stuff and just went to the deposit. But it's still nice to add the Stripe as the customer because you could then run reports. So for example, if I went into the balance sheet and I went into the checking account where I ran some report that was, was a cash detail transaction report, then I could filter by say Stripe by the name and that could give me a little bit more detail than if I didn't add the customer name at all. So I could go down to the filters and I could say, I wanna filter by name 
and it's going to be stripe that I would like to filter by stripe and then run it. So now we can have some filtering options there. So you don't have as much detail as you would have because we entered this information with a deposit, but you still want to enter the customer name because that could still give you a little bit more detail to sort with uh, if you so choose. So going back to the first tab and uh, that's going to be our customer information. So we went back to the second tab. So now we've got the two customers, customer one and the Stripe customer. So that's the general idea. So if we go back to then the balance sheet, this is where we stand on the balance sheet. If I go into the income statement, that is where we stand on uh, the income statement. And in future presentations, we'll add a little bit more complexity to some of the deposits moving away from being completely dependent on the bank statement, possibly to having more of a cash basis system that's not dependent on the bank than to a more accrual based system.